I'm Dave Freund, and I'm here with Sam Paila. Sam, tell us what you do for a living. Well, I'm a barber, and I've been a barber for over 21 years now. Wow, you do not look old enough to be a barber for 21 years. <laughs> I'll so, show the battle scars. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, how did you become a barber? Um, well, um, I wasn't on the path to becoming a barber initially. Um, I was going to college. Um, uh, after high school, I went to RIT my freshman year. And um, by the end of my freshman year, I realized it, RIT wasn't for me. Okay. Uh, and then I came home and I did a couple more years at OCC. Still, I was still on that path. Uh, I initially started as an MIS major, uh, management information system, but it just, it just didn't feel right. I, I didn't feel like that was my, uh, what I was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So um, a, a friend of mine uh, who was a barber at the time and still is, and he suggested it. And um, I never really thought about it. Um, my godfather was a barber, um, but I never thought I'd be a barber. Um, so I threw the idea around to people that really knew me and my personality. Sure. And uh, they said, you know, knowing how very specific and particular you are about your own looks, especially yeah. back then, you know, being around that 20, 28 year age. Sure. Um, uh, they said they, they thought it might be a good idea. So I actually started as a cosmetologist. I went to cosmetology school. Okay. And got, you know, passed my test and started working in a salon. And uh, even that, I never had the imagination for women's hair. Okay. Um, and my friend w uh, who was the barber was still cutting my hair at the barber shop and uh, they were looking for another barber and it just, uh, so I started working there and, but it's two different licenses. So I had to get my barber's apprentice license to start there or go to barber school. But uh, at that time there wasn't one in Syracuse anymore. It was one in Rochester. Okay. So, so tell us a little bit about that. Like how does someone become a barber? Like you talked, you said there wasn't a barber school in Syracuse, there wasn't Rochester. So tell us, what are the paths to becoming a barber? Well, there's, there's two ways. Uh, one, you could be an apprentice studying under a master barber in a barber shop. And that takes two years before you can take your master barber's exam, which is okay. a practic practical exam. Okay. Um, or you can go to barber school, which the closest one's Rochester. Um, and that roughly takes about five months uh, going full time. And then once again, you take the same practical exam at the end of that also. Okay. So when you're going through, um, when you're apprenticing under a master barber, do you get paid while you're working? That depends on the shop. Okay. Um, so that's very specific to the shop um, and what duties they allow and when they allow you to start cutting hair. Um, okay. Some barber shops, as soon as you get your apprentice license, um, you, they'll let you start cutting hair. Um, I don't really like to do that because um, I think you need a lot more foundation than just sure. a piece of paper. Sure. Because you're representing the shop. And that's my name, so. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'm trying to think what I really want somebody who's never cut hair. Well, to cut my hair is not a problem, but <laughs> when I had hair, that would have been a real problem. There is a difference between a good buzz cut and a bad buzz cut. So. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> uh, so my brother, my brother works for me and uh, in with me, and he he got his barber's license as an, uh, through apprenticing under me. And okay. it was probably five to seven months before um, I allowed him to cut hair. And then it was sure. a lot of families and family and friends. Yes. Those guinea pigs, you know. Yeah. You call in those favors. You know, you just, you just tell them, don't worry, it'll grow back, right? That's right. Some longer than others. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so give um, any unique stories about the barbershop. Anybody famous ever come into your barbershop? Um, we have some, some local people, some, some local politicians, but we did have a, a unique experience. Um, one of my friends, Danny Liefka, um, he brought in uh, a man by the name of uh, Jason Rupp, and he's okay. a YouTube um, blogger. Uh, and he, he travels the world getting, he was getting facial shaves and haircuts all across the world. So that was, uh, that was um, a special day. It was, uh, 
it was pretty interesting. My brother gave him the facial shave here. So okay. facing rough to the um, That's probably the biggest, um, most famous person, we'll say. Okay. Very cool. So where's your barber shop? We need to make sure we get that down because you need to get some more folks coming in for haircuts. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we're on the corner of Gelster and Manly Center Road. It's uh, officially uh, considered East Syracuse still. Uh, okay. We're right next to Enterprise Car Rental. Okay. And the name of your shop? Sam's Barbershop. That should be easy for us to remember, Sam's Barbershop. Okay, I agree. great. So what do you like about cutting hair? I love cutting hair. Um, I love all of that. I love the social aspect of it. Um, the gratification that you get, um, you know, after, after the haircut, um, you know, you know, 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes you spend with the person and the relationships that you build with the sure. people. I have people that have been cutting their hair for, for as long as I've been cutting hair, 20, 21 years. And, and then it's, you, some of them were toddlers then in the beginning, and now you see them grow up and finish college or or whatever trade they chose and um you know and then they start their own family and we right. have uh three four generations um of of men that come in and i love that's it awesome. it's great that's awesome so how has this pandemic that we're still working our way through affected your barbershop well um we were out of work for 10 weeks mm, wow uh, and, and for me and for all of us, it was, it, was, it was hard. It was very hard for me not knowing just the, when we were going to be able to come back, how we were going to need to, to come back. Um, so all the uncertainty um, was, uh, was stressing me out. Sure. But, um, you know, once we were able to come back, there were certain protocols we needed and, uh, you know, all the various PPE, um, you know, the, the face mask and the hand sanitizer and, the separation of the of the um, of the chairs and the stations, yeah. uh, the minimizing of how many people can be in the shop at one time. Okay. And um, we had to go to an appointment system, which I never worked by an appointment system in all the years. But it's um, it's it's pretty funny and interesting to see the vast majority of people really like the appointment sure. system, even though it changes the whole dynamic of the shop. Yeah, I, bet. I, I love the banter. I love having yes. the whole couch filled with people yep. and just uh, teasing each other and razzing each other. Sure. Finding out the local gossip or news. Right. And, you know, that's what the barbershop always was. And when you and I did a pre-call, that's what we talked about. It was one of the things I missed when I, my hair started departing, so to speak, was, and my barber passed away that I had gone to for years, was just going there and the, the camaraderie, the banter, the... The, the news that you heard while yeah. you were sitting there having, you know, a bad cup of coffee and a haircut and a good haircut type of thing. Right. So, so what does Sam do when he's not cutting hair? Oh, I, I still work. Uh, you know, I have a family, I have two kids, um, and, you know, always doing projects in the house. Um, but I also, you know, in, in the rarity that I do have a free time um, to myself, I'm, you know, I'm hunting during the season. Or yep. I get to play soccer with a, a bunch of friends. Good. Um, so, but it's, it's most of the time it's it's family time or yeah. or various projects on the house. Terrific. Uh, so, Sam, um, what type of a young person do you think would be attracted to going into being a barber? What should um, what, what type of skill sets might they need to have? Well, I think first and foremost you need to be a, a social person. Yeah. Who. Um, you know, you, I mean, we put in long hours, so mm -hmm. physically it's demanding. Um, so you have to be prepared for that. Um, but the just wanting to converse with people because you're doing it all day long, right? Um, and I mean, some some people are very artistic in this field, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a hairstylist or a barber. Um, I mean, I mean, you see some amazing things that some of the young guys are doing today. Um, and we're kind of like that in between, in between the trendy and the classic. Okay. So we have a huge variety of, of clientele from the toddlers to the, the, uh, the uh, older gentlemen. Sure. So, and sure. everything in between. Wow. It's, you know, it's been a pleasure meeting you, a pleasure having conversations with you. 
Um, keep up the good work and, and thanks for being there to, to give these amazing haircuts right there in East Syracuse. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And it's a great career. Um, I love it. I still love it. Um, my brother regrets not starting earlier than he did. He's been with me about seven years. Um, and it's, it's great. I'm very lucky to work uh, right, next to my, right next to my brother, never thinking we would uh, when we were kids. Sure. But, uh, um, I really appreciate him and, and what he brings to the shop because we're, we're, you know, we're two peas in a pot at sometimes, you know, just the banter and sure. we get everybody else involved. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great place and it's a great profession. So, Sam, thanks so much uh, for giving us this time. So, if somebody needs a good haircut, it's Sam's Barbershop right next to Enterprise Rent-A-Car in East Syracuse. Yep, 6001 Galster Road. Perfect. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thanks.